Hello again and welcome to TSN Wrestling. I am Pete Montana. Joining me ringside is Hugh Hart. Some great matches on today's show. One in particular I'm thinking of you. That is Davy Boy Smith against brother Johnny. Last week they go for an hour. It plays to a draw. Should be another great one tonight. I tell you, this one's a Canadian. It's a Canadian classic. And then in that big main event, the man of a thousand and one holds, Owen Hart's going against my champion, Lethal Larry Cameron. It's going to be a good one here tonight on TSN. Don't go away. Make sure you stay with us. We got great wrestling action coming up in just a minute. In the ring, Kenny Johnson, Lethbridge, 220 pounds, up against Sumo Hara, 223 of Sapporo, Japan. And joining me ringside is Hugh Hart. And uh, Hugh, not a bad match so far. It's an incredibly good match. You've got the man from Sapporo, Japan, Sumo O'Hara, who's a martial arts expert, bar none. And Kenny Johnson, the man from Lethbridge, who's just a rookie starting out, but I think you're going to see some good things from him here tonight. And of course, we have some terrific matches coming up tonight. We've got uh, Davey Boy Smith against Brother Johnny, brother versus brother once again. And I know a match that you have particular interest in, and that is the man of 1,001 holds, Owen Hart, going against uh, your boy, Lethal Larry Cameron. Last week, uh, no contest over the, the top rope. Both of them should be very interesting tonight. I think it's going to be an incredible match. You've seen some of the top action here in Stampede Wrestling. This is the best there is. All right, inside the ring, Kenny Johnson in a little trouble. Subohara up and over he goes. One, two, three. That'll be the match. The winner, and boy, that didn't take long at all. When he gets you in that Northern Light suplex, there's nowhere to go except down on your shoulders to one, two, three count. Joining me inside the ring, you can see them running around. Johnny Smith and manager Abu Wizal. And Johnny, if I can grab you for a minute. Last week, an incredible match, an hour-long match between you and I your brother. I looked good, didn't I? What? I, yes, you did. Yes, I, I did. Think, I think you both did. Baby boy, last week I carried you the full distance. I went 60 minutes with you. I proved to all these morons out here that you couldn't beat me, and you had 60 minutes to do it, boy. Well, this week, it's not going to go 60, because I felt last week I could have finished you off any time I like. This week, it's not going to go 60. I'm going to finish you off well before that, David boy. And one other thing, I've got more tricks up my sleeve than Jessica Harm, and I'm saving a big trick for you this week, David boy. It's not going to be no wrestling match this week. It's not going to be 60 minutes through. It's going to be a butcher in there, David boy. And I'm going to finish you off once and for all. Bulldog this and bulldog that. It's the new age of the bruiser, and the bruiser is going to bruise you. All right, Johnny Smith says he's going to do it tonight with Davey. Will you have anything to say? We'll teach him tonight very well, last and good one. Very good. All right. You've heard it right here. Abu Wiesel, Johnny Smith talking about the match later on on the show with Davey Boy Smith. We'll come back with more wrestling action in just a minute. against Dr. Zhivago. It's the Young Bloods. Chris Benoit, Biff Wellington against Dr. Zhivago and Jason Anderson. And uh, I, I, I got to tell you, I think that uh, I think that Dr. Zhivago and Jason Anderson are in over their heads here. I think they bit off a little more and they could shoot. Oh, look at that beautiful arm drag by Chris Benoit. Now he's got an arm lock. Zhivago back up. He won't submit, though. Boy, Chris Benoit, really, since that car accident, you can't even tell that he was in a car accident. He's doing very, very well. Got Dr. Zhivago all tied up at the moment. And, and these guys really are contenders for apocalypse and destruction. You know, I'm not going to try to fool anybody here, Pete Montana. These two are two young, incredibly talented athletes. Look at the height on that backdrop. Benoit goes over to Zhivago, picks him up. Incredible tag team skills. Working him over, Biff Wellington has Dr. Zhivago in the corner. Now Jason Anderson has to see the inside of the square circle. Oh, a clothesline. A clothesline for Biff Wellington on Dr. Zhivago. And I'll tell you, looks like uh, the young bloods could take this match anytime they wanted to. Well, you shouldn't sell either Zhivago or Jason Anderson short. Zhivago's a wily veteran, and this Jason Anderson is quite strong for his size. Dr. Zhivago in a little trouble with Biff Wellington at this point inside the ring. You know, most people discount these holds, but you know, when you have the poundage of 200 pounds of a man with his arms around the throat, you got to think it's got to be doing something to the windpipe. You know, you have to fight for that air. Little trouble for Dr. Zhivago. 
You know, it was all talk a few minutes ago to Biff Blanton, and uh, now Biff Blanton's doing all the talking with his wrestling moves. Bit of a turnaround off the ropes. Biff Blanton up over the top of the rope again. Misses that. Well, they missed each other on that one. Quick right from Biff. Big right to the chin. Now it's a tag off to Benoit. Benoit, by far, is one of the fastest young wrestlers in all of the business. And once he gets cooking, it's like a big pot boiling over. In great shape is Chris Benoit, despite that car accident a little while ago, and uh, probably a testament to his shape that he wasn't hurt more. Look at that off the ropes. Big oh, elbow. Whoa! Big elbow. Down on the mat, Chicago, and then it's a kick out of that particular. Yeah. We've got to give Chris Benoit credit to come back. The man's benching over 400 pounds. That's not very easy for a man of his size. Great intestinal fortitude. Well, you know, we talked last week about the fact that uh, the young bloods really, they're, they're, I guess, the strongest point of uh, their game is their upper body strength. They're both very strong in the upper body and, and can really do some things. And not only that, they're both quick and agile. Oh, Jason Anderson over the top and out of the ring. Not enjoying that in the least, but very strong wrestlers, you see. I have to say the biggest thing I think about Benoit and Wellington is they've known each other for such a long time, and they are, as you said, very fast. They're going to be a threat to anybody, but apocalypse and destruction, well, I think they can handle them. I was going to say, we haven't seen the Blackhearts for a while, and uh, are we going to see them back soon? Or do, do the Young Bloods have a chance to, to, to go after these guys for the Tag Team Championship? Well, they're in contendership, and as I said, I don't have closet champions. They're going all the way. You know they're involved in Pro Wrestling's tournament. I had to go down last week, check out a few points that I felt I needed to intervene in, and I think the Blackhearts are going to come back stronger than ever. Over the top, Biff Bullington surprises Jason Anderson, tosses him over. Gets him in a headlock, gives him a headbutt, down on the mat goes Jason Anderson at 211 pounds, is a very athletic young man, but he's taking a beating right now. Look at Biff Wellington, quite methodical. He throws him outside of the ring. This man is brutal when he gets going. Boy, that's got to hurt. Dr. Zhivago out to help his partner down on the ring, Burton Thomas, counting Biff out of the ring as they tag. Chris back in. I think the big thing they need to do now is slow this match down. And you're in a match, you need to take advantage of your decisiveness. And they're letting Wellington and Benoit dictate the pace of this match. So, time out. No time outs in there. He's thinking, he's trying to get this down to the match speed that they can wrestle at. Smart wrestling. Jason Anderson in the ring with Chris Benoit, not enjoying this. Wants to talk to the referee. They're looking for some time out, and it's a distraction. Dr. Zhivago thinking about coming in. Benoit with a foot in the midsection. Comes off the rope to Anderson. Boom! Oh, that's a 415-pound bench again. Oh, double drop kick! Benoit's the first to get off. Oh, Anderson takes the powder. Oh, I tell you, I am a little worried. I will admit that, but I think once these two make a mistake with all these high-risk aerobatics, that's going to spell their doom. You know, I, I have to be honest with you. The Blackhearts are an impressive uh, couple of wrestlers. These guys can really go. I mean, the first few times we saw them had to admit they were they were very, very good at what they did, except for a few nefarious uh, type of things that they did inside the ring. Other than that, they were great wrestlers. So uh, it'd be interesting to see these two in the ring together, the Young Bloods and the Blackhearts, and I'm looking forward to that match as I know you are. Don't say war, you make them sound like they're dead. Let's get back to the action in the ring. You see Benoit went for two near fall counts, but he couldn't get them. This Jason Anderson, like I said, he's young, he's small, and he's deceptive. I think you're going to see big things from this man in a few years. Some criticism I have, he's got to lose that prison haircut. Biff Wellington on top of Jason Anderson going for the three, not quite. Biff's got to stay on him if he has any chance of winning this match. Into the turnbuckle, a tag. Dr. Zhivago looking kind of, yeah, I got you, pal. No problem. I got to admit, these guys do look a little bit of lethargic. But you know, the Derringers came in here, the derelicts as I'm calling them now, and I taught them in three weeks how to do some devious trickery. These guys could take some lessons also. Well, they certainly could. Dr. Zhivago trying to go over both the Biff Wellington and Chris Benoit. Oh, right a double head How do you like that? Oh, Cedric headache number nine. Zhivago's reeling from the big double head, but like Chris Benoit. Always asking for friendship. 
extends that hand like he normally does, and this is usually not a good sign. Uh, Maybe it's glass nose, two nose. This man's from Russia. I don't know about that. I tag, and in comes Chris Benoit. Chivago offering the hand, a little smile. He has one of those uh, Gorbachev uh, tattoos on his head, I know. Maybe he isn't from Russia. Who knows? I don't know if it's from Albania. It might be the map of Alberta. Smart move. Into the eyes. They always take a big man down, no matter how big they are. Now into the headlock. Thumb to the throat. Headlock comes back. Double leg. Dr. Zhivago is suffering from that one. Oh, shot to stop. the chest. Zhivago in a little pain. And he's going to be flung across into the turnbuckle back. Chris Benoit. Looks like a monkey flip. And it is. He's up. Benoit throws that with such finesse. Now he's going to keep up on his man. You're going to see some fast work here in teamwork with Biff and Chris, the young ones. Oh, big knee to the ribs. Biff Wellington working oh. over Dr. Shivago. He goes that right no, the other way around. Boy, I'll tell you, it does, uh, it does go back and forth. Just it? like the pendulum, the men, men swings back and forth. Dr. Shivago taking Biff Wellington off the ropes, throws him in, looks for a big swing, can't get him, whoa! Body block, they're down, one, two, oh, only a two count. Jason Anderson tried to come in. Another big right to the eyes. He stays on his man, into the corner. It looks like a little double team to fill him. Biff Wellington in some trouble now. Tries to get Burton Thomas's attention, does so. Burton Thomas is gonna get Chris Benwell back out of the ring, and while they're doing that, Jason Anderson working over Biff Wellington in the corner. Chivago, the tag, hangs on, and Biff Wellington's in some trouble. I've got to admit, they've got the basics down. They were smart to get, to get two veterans like the Youngbloods in trouble. If they can keep this momentum up, they may have this match. Biff Wellington worked over by Jason Anderson. He's got a hand underneath there. I don't know if that's a choke. Looks like one from here. He was counted off. Now he's got his foot on top of Biff's throat. He's being counted off by a yellow card for Jason Anderson. You know, what is with this Burton Thomas? He's quite the tough official. Have you ever noticed that? He's always calling things by the book. Well, uh, you know, he said he's not going to take anything from anybody, and that includes you and uh, every wrestler and me. And uh, he seems to be living right by that book. Well, I'm going to try to be unbiased, but I've got his number. And let me tell you, Jason Anderson, big elbow drop. Cover him, hook the leg. Now, see, that's youth. That's inexperience. He should have hooked the leg. He may have got this long time. Biff Wellington in some trouble and has been for the last couple of minutes inside the ring. He's in the corner now. Jason Anderson driving that shoulder into the midsection. That'll knock the wind out of you. Do you know that that Jason Anderson actually played a little pro ball? I noticed that when he's throwing those shoulders in. Looks pretty impressive, like I said. Oh, big snap suplex. And where's he going? Chivago going up on top. He's on top of the rope. He's looking to fly. Dr. Chivago has Biff Wellington taking a lot of time. He paid for that dearly. Oh. Can Wellington get to the corner? He did. Benoit's in. He's on Chivago. Into the rope. What is it? Oh, that well, that big Benoit clothesline. He picks him up again. Big headbutt. Dagger Chivago into the corner. Into the turnbuckle. Oh. 360. Don't like that. Chris Benoit in control of this match. Now is the time you're looking for a pin on Dr. Chivago. He's in some trouble. Back suplex? No. It looks like he's going for that second leg superplex. If he gets this, ladies and gentlemen, it could be all over. Chris Benoit going for the superplex. Oh, and he hits it perfectly right on the back of the neck. Boy, Chris Benoit not done yet. Not done yet. And it looks like he gets himself in a little trouble. Chivago goes for the eyes to tag to Anderson. Now Anderson is in trouble with Benoit. Oh, big knee to the back. One, two. Jason Anderson kicks out. you got to give the little guy credit. Off 211 pounds. But he's pretty quick. Off the ropes. Elbow. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's got to hurt. In comes Chivago to break that up. In for the save. Little smart wrestling there. Oh, that's what your wrestlers do, right? When the time comes, of course. Not illegal unless you get in there by five count. There you go. What are they selling illegal as anyway? A sick bird? <laughs> Another yellow card. Second yellow card. Second yellow card. This is getting a little out of hand. All four wrestlers in the ring. The throw. Oh, oh, DDT by Biff Wellington. Chris Benoit stops Chivago. And now Biff Wellington in with Jason Anderson trying to get a pin. That's the man they got a pin. Got him in the pile.
pile driver position. Double pile driver. Here we go. Upside down. Good night, Irene. One, two, three. Oh. Oh, twin pile drivers. Which man's legal in the ring here? They got to decide what's going on. This official needs to clean his glasses. I think it's Jason Anderson, gang. I think that's an what are illegal they doing? count out. Is it a oh, they're both going up. Here they go. Chris Benoit up in one corner. Fifth he better the count other. these guys out. What's the problem? Off the here? top rope. Good night, Adam. Double splash. Got them both. He pinned both men with that double splash off the top rope. Incredible, incredible win for the... Well, it's not hard to tell who's in the ring with me right now. It's Owen Hart, and we have a, a very special presentation to make. Pro Wrestling Illustrated did a very special uh, poll. Pick your favorite wrestler. Pick the all-time great is what they did. And standing next to me is the man that you voted the most popular and best wrestler of all time. The man of a thousand and one holds Owen Hart. And Owen, first of all, some roses on behalf of uh, some very, very thankful fans. And this wonderful trophy commemorating the event from Pro Wrestling Illustrated. And I know it's uh, on behalf of fans in Japan, Europe, and North America. It's just fantastic. Well, I'll tell you, Larry, this is a great, uh, great, great feeling to have won this trophy. This, this bunch of roses and these flowers. This is a token of the hard efforts and the work that I put in the ring. And it's not just because of me, it's because of you great fans who gave me that encouragement in the ring. Now, Pistol Pete, these mean a lot to me, and they're gonna look great right on my mantle. And the only thing that's missing on my mantle, Lisa Larry, is that North American heavyweight belt. So I'll tell you something, Lisa Larry. It's a great honor to win this trophy, these flowers. It's great, and it's only given me more incentive to come out tonight. It's a non-title match. I'm gonna beat you tonight, Lisa Larry Cameron, and I'm gonna get that North American belt. And one week from tonight, I am gonna be the North American champion, and that belt will rest with this trophy and these great flowers. How in the hell you get off on being the greatest athlete? Who will you beat on, Hart? I know your dad is promotion, but who will you beat? What make you deserve this trophy? I'm a Shirley nominee. I got over 108 straight wins on. I'm the North America heavyweight champion. You tell me, how in the hell did you end up with this trophy? How did you end up being an athlete of the year? I earned this trophy because I wrestled hard each and every one of my matches. I won my matches fair and square. And anytime, Lisa Larry, you think that you can challenge and beat me, like tonight, you come and take your best shot because it's only gonna be a week before I get that North American belt. Well, I tell you what, Owen. You take that trophy and you stick it where the sun don't shine. Because I tell you what, tonight, when I come back, I'm going to do things to you that can't be showed on TV. I'm out of here. I dare you to try. I dare you to try. Oh, I can't believe this. It's a cheap shot. You turn around a cheap shot. Look what he's doing to him. This is unreal. You want to think about this trophy? What's this? You think I... You think I... Oh, nice. Look at this. You think he's down with Oh, that's incredible. I can't believe this. That's unreal. I thought the man was a professional. I thought the man was a professional, and this is what we're seeing in the ring. I don't know. I'll tell you something, Lisa Larry, you pushed your luck too far. You busted my trophy, you broke my heart, you broke the heart of all these fans in Western Canada. But I'll tell you something, Lisa Larry, tonight it's going to be my night. I'm going to be over you like white on rice. And Lisa Larry, you're going to pay for what you just did to me. You're going to pay. All right, a little later on tonight, Owen Hart and Lisa Larry Cameron. When we come back, I'll have another interview for you. Skull Mason, the king of the boardwalk, 260 pounds from Atlantic City, New Jersey, up against D.J. Peterson. Brand new to the territory, 245 pounds, six foot three. Absolutely incredible. He is massive from St. Joseph's, Missouri. D.J. Peterson, young, talented, high flyer. Look at this. Skull Mason letting him put a full Nelson on. <laughs> he did, didn't enjoy that in the least. But of course, on the rope, got to break it. Throws him over, throws him over again as DJ Peterson wants him and Skull Mason out of the ring. Now throughout the show, Hugh Hart, the infamous manager, has 
been here with me, but typical of Hugh Hardy has disappeared. I don't know where he went. But that's all right. I, I thought he was being a little condescending tonight, being a little too nice, and I never trust the man. You just can't trust Hugh Hart. Burton Thomas in the ring. He is your third man. DJ Peterson, six foot. He's a big, big boy. Skull Mason in there with him. DJ Peterson now over the top. And Skull Mason's in some trouble. Burton Thomas asked him if uh, maybe he'd like to go home right now, call a match. Skull Mason say, no thanks, no thanks. Can we just call that, please? DJ Peterson. Causing a little pain for Skull Mason right now. Still to come tonight, of course, incredible match. Johnny Smith, the British Bruiser, against his brother Davey Boy Smith. Brother versus brother, one fall. A 90-minute time limit is what they have. Last week, you'll remember, a 60-minute time limit on their match. Went the distance. No decision on that. DJ Peterson, a monkey top. Oh, Skull Mason heard that one. Comes in and a turnbuckle and misses. DJ Peterson maybe taking a little bit too much time. Skull Mason gets out of the way. And now it's Skull's turn to apply the big boot. And a hand. And another one. But tonight, like we were saying, Davy Boy Smith, Johnny Smith. We're in for another great one tonight. And of course, man of 1001 holds Owen Hart against Lethal Larry Cameron. You saw Lethal jump in the ring and break up into pieces. That trophy that Owen received from Pro Wrestling Illustrated and the many, many fans who voted him the most popular wrestler of all time. And I know that broke Owen's heart as well. Trophy And you can bet tonight when they get in the ring, it will not be a pretty sight. As well, we'll have the Archangel against Vinny Valentino from Brooklyn, New York. Vinny, mid-heavyweight, 222 pounds, in great shape. The Archangel, of course, undefeated. In the ring, you're seeing Skull Mason and DJ Peterson. Burton Thomas checking for a choke. That's what he's looking for. You can, can't really get a, a good view of it, and I'm sure Burton Thomas can't either. DJ Peterson turns that around on Skull. Up and over he goes. 260 pounds on his back, the big elbow from DJ Peterson. And once again, joining me ringside is Hugh Hart. Mr. Goodman, where'd you go? I had some business to take care of. You see this young, exciting DJ Peterson? Yeah. Oh, I tell you, I have a file on this man. It's his move. It's called the TNT, and it means destruction. That's it. That's the match. DJ Peterson taking care of Skull Mason in absolutely no time at all. Absolutely incredible, and I'll tell you what, six foot three, DJ Peterson, Hugh Hart, he's an incredible wrestler. And now into the ring with Pete Montana. Joining me in the ring is DJ Peterson, six foot three, St. Joseph, Missouri. You took care of Skull Mason there in no time at all. Yeah, you know, first of all, I want to say hello to all the people in the great Northwest. I'm glad to be back in action. You know, I've had some injuries that hold me out. I took about a year off. I'm back. I may not be 100% right now. But I soon will be, which brings me to another point. The point of uh, Larry Cameron, you know, back in the Midwest, up from a little town called St. Joseph's, North Kansas City. I've run into him in Kansas City a few times. It seems like every time I go somewhere, join a new wrestling organization where Larry Cameron is, he seems to turn up missing shortly thereafter. Well, I'll tell you what, he's standing here holding the belt right now. Which means he ain't going to leave with that belt wrapped around his waist, which he may lose tonight. Good friend of my own heart. That's why I came for the belt. Well, they but one reason I'm here, and that's money. Okay, the more, more money you make, that's the name of the game, baby. And you make more money with that belt right through anyway. So I'd rather be old heart, or I'd rather be my good buddy, Larry Cameron. That's fine with me. I want it. All right, you heard it. DJ Peterson's after lethal Larry Cameron. He wants that North American Heavyweight Championship, and he's in some shape. It's the Archangel against Vinny Valentino, and the Archangel's in a little trouble. Hugh Hart is your boy. And undefeated and a physical specimen, no doubt. Hey, what is with this Vinny Valentino? He's got a name like a pizza delivery man. He's wearing pants like Chippendales. He's from the Bronx. I'm expecting him to yell, yo, Adrian. What's the deal here? Huh? What's his credential, huh? Archangel in a little trouble right now, Vinny Valentino. 
in control. There's no trouble here. Speaking of the fans, of course, good fans here tonight. There they are. A couple. Of, there's a youngin. Hi, mom. You know, if you want to look at beautiful women, look at the beautiful, curvaceous KC Houston. At well, she, she's certainly beautiful and curvaceous, but I was talking about the fans for a reason. You, they're here to see the big match tonight. Davy Boy Smith against Johnny Smith. That's the big match tonight, and that's why the fans are here. That's one of two big matches tonight. You've got the second match with a man of a thousand and one holes, Owen Hart and Larry Cameron. Well, there you go. And it uh, should prove to be very interesting. And I'll be honest with you, I love to watch the Archangel. I really do. When he's a great wrestler doing the things that he does best, he uh, he's actually unstoppable. But Vinny Valentino is giving him a run for his money in front of the sellout crowd here at the Victoria Pavilion. Look at that toss. Oh! And the Archangel out of the ring. I don't believe this. I don't believe this. This is the first time I have ever seen the Archangel out of the ring. What's going on? You know, I think this Italian guy had a little bit of olive oil on his body or something. He just slipped off it. That's all there was to it. Oh, he slipped out of the ring. Yeah, did you see it? I, I, I'm glad you saw that. I'm glad you saw it. Vinny Valentino what's showing a little fans? stuff. Why? Well, that's just, what's with his mask? What's he from Chippendales? What's the deal? Vinny Valentino's in some shape, and he's giving Archangel a run for his money right now. The Archangel outside the ring. Vinny trying to incite the crowd on just a little bit, then inside comes the Archangel. And he, I, I'll tell you what, though, I am worried if he gets that very, very incredibly hard move. The one called that, pounding the pavement. There you go, pounding a pavement. You power know, of power. He's incredible when he gets him up there. You know, when you look at this Vinny Valentino, he talks about being Italian. Pete Montana, your name in Italian means mountain. Well, the big Archangel, he's the mountain. He certainly is. Two count. Archangel taking Vinny a little lightly. Uh, not quite ready to put him away, it seems. But got to be careful with a man like Vinny Valentino. A little trouble right now, though, that's for sure. Yeah, he's in trouble, just like all the other opponents. We'll just line him up, and the Archangel will send him to heaven. Vinny Valentino, Brooklyn, New York, 222 pounds. A shot to the stomach. That's the wrong place to hit the Archangel. The abdominals is not the area you want to be hitting this man, because it's like running into a wall. 3,000 sit-ups today. That's all it takes. You're kidding. 3,000. You know I don't kid. 3,000 sit-ups today, kids. You want to look like the Archangel, uh, that's a start. Vinny Valentino in some trouble right now. You know when he throws that clothesline, it's like the pure force of you hitting your brakes at 90 miles an hour. You just go through the windshield. A two count, and the Archangel pulls him back up. Not ready yet. Not ready yet. I think the Archangel just needs a little bit of workout. I tell my men, let's just get a little workout. Vinny Valentino with the foot to the abdominals, and again, that's not the place to go. It just seems to aggravate the Archangel. Shots to the head on Vinny Valentino. Now a little action on the top rope. Can't see it from where we are, but you can bet that his throat's on that. Referee Jurgen Herman counting him off. Vinny thrown off that top rope. Just like a rag doll. That's the incredible strength of the awesome Archangel. Archangel is working on Vinny's mouth. You can't see it, but he's working on his mouth with his hands, trying to uh, perhaps open that up a little bit so you get a little more Italian food in there. I don't know. You know one thing I have to give uh, Archangel and Larry Cameron about? It's like the Beatles. There's four of them. There's my black heart, myself, the Archangel, and Cameron. And you see, the Archangel and Cameron can work as solo artists, and so can I. The black hearts are coming along, but it's like those derringers. They couldn't cut it, just like Vinny can. Vinny Valentino still making the mistake of going to the abs on the Archangel, and boy, I'll tell you, fists have got to hurt after that. To the rope, the turnbuckle, oh. Here it comes, pounding the pavement. Archangel, oh, gone for the turnbuckle. Valentino gets out of the way. And the Archangel looks a little shaken. And I gotta be honest with you, we have not seen the Archangel shaken. Hugh Hart is a little upset. He's up, a shot to the head, a shot to the chest, and now a foot into the stomach, into the chest, into the stomach. Vinny Valentino, up the rope goes the Archangel, the elbow, and down goes 250 pounds of the Archangel. Vinny Valentino, the top rope, trying to get up there in a hurry. Archangel a little shaken. Here goes Vinny, boom, baby! And down goes the man in a white mask. And Vinny Valentino going back up to the top rope. He wants the Archangel in the big way. The Archangel 
to shake it up. Now's the time to get him. Uh-oh. Oh, yes. Uh-oh. That's got to hurt. You see, that's experience. It's not like the man from Brooklyn. And now we're sending him a heaven, courtesy of pounding the pavement. Pounding the pavement. That's exactly what happened. The Archangel, two, three, gets the pin. Absolutely incredible. The Archangel remains undefeated. He's going to give Vinny over the top rope. Oh, that is not a pretty sight. Absolutely not a pretty sight. Joining me, Chris Benoit and Biff Wellington, the Young Bloods and guys, the Blackhearts. I mean, uh, where the heck are they? I, I just cannot believe that this is going on. They were supposed to be here tonight. What's going on? I'd like to know where the Blackhearts are. Ever since Biff and I got back into the territory, we've been teaming up. We're going after the belt. The Blackhearts suddenly disappear. Well, you, you can only hide them for so long. They'll have to defend this, those belts within a month. And I'll tell you what, they're going to lose those belts within a month to Biff and I. You know, Biff, you guys got to be awful tired of waiting. Well, it's not just the waiting. Me and Chris know all about the waiting. Me and Chris held those tag team belts before. We're bigger, we're better, we're faster, we're stronger now than we've ever been before. I'll tell you what, Blackhearts, when you book a match, and you will book a match soon, when you book a match with Beef Wellington and Chris Benoit, you're buying yourself a one-way ticket on a freight train. And all you two need to know is that freight train's name, and that's the freight train of pain. All right, you heard it here. The Youngbloods, Chris Benoit, Biff Wellington after. The Black Hearts, and they want them real bad. Jonathan Hart is tangled up in the ropes. Lethal Larry being talked to by Jurgen Herman. A boot to the back. Owen can't seem to get out of this. He's in some trouble right now. You know, this is Old West Justice. The criminals is caught in the gallows, and it's up to the adjudicator to give him the sentence. Owen trying so hard. Jurgen Herman trying to help him out. He's counting Lethal Larry back, trying to get him out of the ropes. And I don't know if you've ever touched those ropes, but there's an awful lot of tension on those things. The only way to get out of them is to uh, be helped out, and, and Lisa Larry helped Owen out probably for a purpose. Oh, what about that flying? Huh? Where's the flipping and flying Owen Hart? Huh? Where's all these flips off the top rope? Where's all this top gun stuff that we've been accustomed to? Yellow card to Lisa Larry Cameron from referee Jurgen Herman, and uh, hey, this match isn't over yet. There's a whole lot of match left here yet, Hugh. You know, I'm glad my insurance policy is paid because I don't like being responsible for what Larry does to Owen. Owen Hart with a shoulder into Lethal Larry's midsection. A pretty fancy toss over the top sunset flip. One, two. Kicked out by Lethal Larry Cameron. There was some flipping and flying on Owen's side of things. I don't know where that Owen Hart gets those reserves. He's like an old car. Every so often you think it sputters, but then all of a sudden it just comes through at about 80 miles an hour. Well, you should know that. All the hearts have that, don't they? At least my side of the family. <laughs> Lethal Larry going for the count. What is Jurgen Herman's problem? That was a very, very slow count. Lethal Larry in control has Owen Hart all tied up at the moment. You know, what Owen Hart's got to do is start working out, maybe going to the gym, learning a few gymnastics, maybe running a bit. Then, you know, maybe he'd be able to fly off the ropes like Larry he Cameron. He does that. He already does that. He, he works out every day. You don't think he works out every day? Combing his hair, maybe. I don't know. Owen Hart in some trouble right now. Lethal Larry Cameron in control. Referee Jurgen Herman counting him back. Owen oh, trying to get back up on the ropes. Lethal Larry will help him up. Up in the air he goes. Body slam. Whoa. Larry Cameron, always the gentleman. First to help you up and first to knock you down. Owen oh, Hart on the canvas. Oh, Lethal Larry misses from the second rope. Took a little too much time there, maybe who? No comment. No comment. Lethal Larry in a little trouble here. Owen Hart to the midsection, to the head, to the head again as he continues to hound Lethal Larry off the ropes. Down! Look at that drop kick! Hello, baby! Lethal Larry Cameron is on the canvas holding the side of his head. Now, no wonder because Owen Hart going to work. Where's Owen Hart getting this energy from? He's like a ball of fire. Well, that's what he's like. He's like the rest of the heart. And he's got a hold of him. And what? Count. That's what he's going to do. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Lethal Larry, a little bit craggy. He should have broke that to five count. What does he think illegal is? A sick bird? Another shot. And Owen goes back at it. Again, 
this got to hurt. I mean, uh, lethal can't be that tough. You know, it's like hitting cement. You always walk on it, but it's always got to be there for you to walk on. Oh, and Art, that top rope, he's flying! Got him down, two! Whoa! And you have to give credit to the athlete in Lethal Larry Cameron because that's what's saving him right now. You know, like I said before, it's like Peter Pano on Hart. We're going to clip your wings and send you back to Never Never Land. Two. Two count this time. Oh, it's just not strong enough. I seem to remember a little while ago, you're looking pretty worried about this. You're not looking too, too good about this right now, Hugh. You're a little worried? I have the utmost confidence in all of my wrestling. Over the top goes Lethal Larry Owen Hart, looking for that three count again. Oh, that was awfully close. I got to admit, that was beautiful technique by Owen Hart. That was a beautiful suplex, but not beautiful enough. Chop to the chest. Owen looking at that turnbuckle. Fires Lethal Larry in chest first, and he hangs on the top rope and falls to his knees. He's just laying on that second rope. Owen Hart wants him, and he's helping him up. Owen Hart the rope. Here comes Lethal. Big elbow and down goes LL. I can't believe this. We're seeing the bull in the woods against the eye of the tiger. But I have confidence that the bull is going to beat the tiger. Down goes Lethal Larry and here goes Owen again. What he does best. Flying off that top rope. Owen Hart. The man of a thousand and one holds. Boom. Hello. a little slow to me. At least I'm glad this referee's given the same slow count to Owen Hart that he gives to Larry Cameron. Well, you can't argue with that. Here's Owen Hart, another suplex up and over. Oh, boy, that's a lot of weight. And Owen's going back up. Got to be worried, you. I think Owen's going to go to the well too often. Here goes Owen Hart flying again. Oh! Oh, he's flying, trying rather, a flying headbutt, and he got a couple of size 13s right in the head. Owen Hart, DC-10, down in flames. Owen suffering. So is Lethal Larry. They're both being counted by referee Jurgen Herman. The question is, who's going to get up first? Larry's up. Owen's to his knees. Lethal Larry applies the first blow. The first is the fatal blow. Owen off the ropes. Oh! Big football tackle. This is what won him to Shinley. Two. Oh, we're just playing a little bit. Don't you think maybe he should have taken a three count there? I mean, he's been in trouble in this match. As manager, wouldn't you have uh, advised him to go for that? Well, it's like a good record. Watch the count. Oh, again, we're playing him. Like I said, it's like a good record producer. You let the solo artist sing. You don't tell him how to do his music. You heard it from Hugh Hart, manager of Lethal Larry Cameron, who joins me ringside for today's show. Here comes the Lethal One over the top rope. No disqualification. Pete, I told you again. Once again, his own no DQ rules has ruled against him because in the normal match, this would have been over. But let me tell you what. This is going to lay him out, and I think it's just a matter of time before this match is over. Well, here comes Lethal Larry outside the ring with Owen Hart, and he's looking for the table. Oh, oh that's terrible. I'd hate to interfere here, you know. Why well, you would, wouldn't you? That's awful. That's terrible. Owen's laying next to us second here. Yellow card for and uh, there he is here, the second yellow card for Lethal Larry. Owen trying to pick himself up and get back into the ring. How come you disappear so fast when something like that happens? I didn't want to get hit. What do I look like? Lethal Larry. As I said, match. my heart side of the family had the brain. <laughs> Lethal Larry picking Owen up. Well, I'll just bring him back in here. Oh, a small package. Oh, it has been a small package. Three, that's it. It's a three count. Oh, it's got him in a three count. That's it. Oh, it's got him in a three count. So, um, Lethal, uh, not for the title, but next week's going to be for the bell, right? Shut your stupid mouth. I don't want to hear nothing out of you, okay? Just when you're talking to me, just you call me Mr. Lethal, okay? Because I'm not in a very good mood right now. All and right. don't be smiling. Okay. Give me the microphone. Okay, David boy. Horn hard. You did something that very few men could do. You lucked up, Horn. But I tell you what, next week on, right here, 
No matter how it came out on, you deserve a title, man. But I promise you next week on, I promise you, I spurred you, I pulled you up over and over again on. I save you. Everybody on national TV, no on. I'm saving you for the big one. I'm gonna crush you in front of all these low life morons. And when I get through with you on, you'll be nothing but dog meat. Oh, in a small package, you take Lisa Larry, and then he jumps you from behind. Obviously not happy, but uh, you gotta be happy with what you did. I told you, Pete, last week I said, Lisa Larry Cameron, I would have all your tricks beaten. Tonight I would come in here and I would beat you in a wrestling match. And Lisa Larry Cameron, that's exactly what I did. Now, you know what? I said last week I wouldn't put you down because I respected you in the ring. And you're still a great athlete. You're fit, you're strong, and you're fast. But I had a little bit more maneuvers tonight, and I beat you, Lisa Larry Cameron. And I said last week, I know in my heart that I can beat you. And I took that last little bit of incentive. When you came out here, you smashed that trophy of mine. You broke my heart. But I'll tell you something, Lisa Larry. Next week, that North American belt is going to be around my waist. I held that belt on many occasions. And I'll tell you something, Lisa Larry. There's nothing, nothing that means more to me than that North American belt. It's going to be only seven more days, Lisa Larry Cameron. I'm going to get that belt, and it's going to be so sweet, sweeter than the victory that I just got by beating you. One, two, three. You're going down, Lisa Larry Cameron, next week. Owen Hart says so right here. The North American Heavyweight Championship, a title match next week. Floyd down on the canvas. These two combatants are going out of tooth and nail. Johnny's now alluding to the crowd, showing that he senses victory. Davy's crawling like the British bull puppy he is, and Johnny goes for the cover. Two. Davy throws him off, but you, you can tell he's hurting because you, even you know that when Davy Boy's in great shape, he can just pick a guy up and toss him, no problem. Davy Boy turning this around a little bit, but not quite in his favor. Now they're going at it, tooth and nail. Off the oh, turn around, Davy Boy, big knee, and down he goes in that same leg he tortured last week. Johnny, as I said, he's very smart. They must have studied last week's tape. They knew exactly what to do, and they took advantage of Davy's weak areas. Johnny Smith prodding the fans. The fans obviously not happy with what uh, is transpiring in the ring right now. Davy Boy in some trouble. Burton Thomas distracted by the referee again. Here goes Davy Boy off the rope. Swing and a miss there. Boom! Down goes Johnny. There's Boy, that brilliancy that you've talked about before. Davy coming back after it seems like he's completely down. But and you know, you gotta wonder about a guy who wears his flag on his rear end if he can take him serious. Well, he's just he's just being patriotic to his country. Is there anything wrong with that? I think he's showing no respect. This is the true Englishman. And in fact, Princess Diana says it's his favorite athlete. Baby boy delivering a blow to Johnny Smith, and he's down and outside the canvas. Abu Wizal is out here having a look at his boy down below the canvas, and Burton Thomas starts the count. That Davy's a tough one, but you know, I hear that Princess Ferguson personally likes Johnny, because as I said before, Davy is the boy, Johnny is the man. Well, we'll see about that. Burton Thomas arguing with Davy Boy right now. Davy Boy wants him in the ring. He doesn't want to count him out. He wants Johnny in here. He wants to beat him fair and square. Well, what does that prove? They've been fighting all their life. I'm sure if it hasn't been at home in the playground, this has got to be the deciding factor. Well, what about when they were a team? Whoa, look at the strength of Davy Boy. Down goes Johnny Smith. Oh. I think if there's one weakness Johnny does have over Davy, it's the strength. I think Davy's weakness is he doesn't think and he doesn't have, I said earlier, two minds thinking for him. Absolutely incredible. Davy Boy is in control of this match right now, and he is working over brother Johnny. And if he continues to do this, this match will certainly not go the 60 minutes it did last week. It will certainly be a much shorter match both men predicted it would be. You know, Pete, I've got to ask myself, how could brothers do this to each other? Have you seen anything more? This is just, there's so much personal honor and pride at stake here. This isn't just a wrestling match. This is an epic battle between two siblings. Well, you, how, how can you do that with your family? Tell me that. It's the same sort of thing, isn't it? 
their distant cousins because their minds in space. Johnny Smith down and almost out. Manages to get to his feet, but right there waiting for him is brother Davy Boy right back down. How come when Johnny's in trouble, this referee goes over and talks to the weasel? Is he is he biased or what? I think the weasel's distracting him. I think what he's trying to do is give Johnny a chance. If the weasel wanted to talk to anybody, he'd talk to me. He's not stupid. <laughs> well, that's a matter up for debate. Johnny Smith in trouble. Not so much trouble that he can't deliver a few blows back to Davy Boy. But there's that headbutt again. And look at Johnny. He is definitely hurting right now. Down on the canvas goes Johnny Smith. You know, Pete, you've got to know this really hurts. I know when you watch other sports like football and you say how hard they're hitting. Just imagine bare flesh on bare flesh. There's no hockey mouse, no goalie mouse here. This is a real meal deal. This is wrestling. It certainly is, and Johnny Smith is on the receiving end of all that flesh on flesh right now. Davy Boy in control of the match and continues to work over Brother John. And certainly, as we have said so many times between these two, a giant headbutt from Davy Boy. Smith leaves his feet to do it, and Johnny's down. But as we've said so many times before, certainly no brotherly love lost between these two guys. Not like two brothers I've ever seen. Oh, he's getting up with a big power slam. It's the power slap from Davy Boy Smith on brother John. One, two, he's got him, but... Oh, yellow card for Davy Boy Smith. I think that was quite a cocky move on Davy's part. What is he doing? I, was I alluded to earlier, this man doesn't have brains. I'll tell you what it is. It's payback for last week. That's what it is. It's payback for last week, but he's got a yellow card already. Davy Boy has him. Pile driver. Johnny's out. That's it. Uh, he'll pin him this time. I think Johnny's got to do no, something. Johnny, drastic. He's got him, too. What is with Davy? He doesn't have enough brains to I pour water out of a boot. What's know. going on Bert here? Thomas giving him a second yellow card. Third is a disqualification. What is Davy Boy thinking about? He's working over brother Johnny, and he's got him. This match is over. Burton Thomas is counting him. If he gets up there... I thought these two wanted to show their athletic ability. This has turned into a brotherly vendetta. Certainly has, and Davy Boy continuing to pound on brother John. Burton Thomas is counting him off. He's warning him. Look what at he's the doing. Endurance. Look at the stamina. Look at the pounding blows. This is a match. This is a match. Burton Thomas tossed aside by Davy Boy. Burton Thomas trying to get this match stopped. Davy Boy tosses him aside. He's already got two yellow cards. He's got to be careful. Johnny is really suffering in this one. Davy Boy could end this match at any time, you. Anytime. Twice already he's had the opportunity. I don't understand that. I don't know. Maybe Johnny's just testing the waters. Well, it's payback time for Davy Boy Smith. That's what he's doing. He's going over Brother John so that this time he'll understand that, hey, pal, yeah, I taught you everything you know, and I'm showing you everything I didn't teach you. You know, should Johnny be penalized because he was born younger? Huh? Is this the problem here? This uh, Davy Boy's got a showboat? That's the referee? second time Burton Thomas has been tossed aside. That's it. It's a red card and a disqualification. A red card and a disqualification for Davy Boy Smith. As always, absolutely incredible wrestling, isn't it? I, I was just, I was just flabbergasted all night long. Some incredible matches tonight, and you know, the next time they will be just as incredible. Remember, same wrestling time, same wrestling channel. We'll see you next week.